All right, DIYers, let's take a look at my presentation on how to use the TDA7449LIC to be used mainly as a volume control. But of course, um, we can use it also as a balance control with an input gain and the two input selection. As I'm saying, the TDA7449L with the suffix L do not have a bus and treble control. Should you decide to have a bus and treble control, you can select the TDA7449 without the L. By the way, before I start, all the information in my presentation is almost 98% um, coming from the TDA7449L datasheet. It is therefore necessary to take a look at the datasheet if you want to know more. That is something that I can suggest. The block diagram of the TDA7449L comes with six functions. They are number one is the input selection or input multiplexer, number two is the gain block, number three the volume block, number four the balance block or sometimes they call it the speaker attenuator block, number five the I2C interface block, and number six is the PSU and grounding system. We will only discuss the first five blocks in relation to microcontroller and how to enable the function. The sixth block, which is the PSU and the grounding system, have been discussed in the DR100 equalizer and tone control module. Click the link on the description below. This section is quite important for minimizing the noise in a hybrid analog and digital system that so-called analog heart digital brain. Let's see the input multiplexer or the input selection and the gain block. There are two inputs, input 1 and input 2, and whichever input is selected, you can boost that from 0 to plus 30 dB for both the left and the right channel. We will see later how to do that using the I2C protocol. Let's see the volume control, which is uh, just one control for the left and the right channel from 0 to minus 47 dB in a 1 dB step and then followed by the mute. It means that uh, there are 48 steps from 0 to mute. We can see an analogy to the most popular volume control potentiometer in our DIY hobby. When uh, we fully rotate the potentiometer into a full clockwise, this is a 0 dB. And um, when the volume control is fully rotated counterclockwise, this is the mute. There is no output from our amplifier. Well, everybody knows this is scenario in the potentiometer volume control, which is basically in almost the same in a digital domain. Now, let's see the speaker attenuator, or I normally call it as the balance control, which is an individual control for the left and the right channel. And um, there are about uh, 80 steps from uh, 0 dB to minus 79 dB and then um, completely mute the left or the right channel. Again, this is an individual access not like the volume control or the gain control which is uh, um, you can simultaneously um, control the left and right uh, at the same time but uh, the balance control is different. It is individually controlled. Again, we can see this in a more popular potentiometer balance control based on the wiper arm of the potentiometer. Like um, when at the middle, I mean the wiper arm is at the middle of the potentiometer, the left and the right channel is in the balance condition. When the wiper arm is on the top, the right channel is dominant and probably the left channel may be no output. You can only hear the right channel. When the wiper arm, the potentiometer is on the bottom side, the left channel is dominant 
and it will be a minimum output from the right channel all right so those are the basic function of the tda 7449l the input the gain block the volume block and the balance block and now is the time to address and enable those function by supplying the right data into the right device using the i2c protocol guys before we continue May I request to subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button, sign into your Google account and click the subscribe button. Click the like thumbs up should I deserve it or click the dislike if I deserve that. Share it to your audio DIY friends who might need it and um, like DIY free learning like uh, what I'm doing right now. Really, thank you for your support. Salamat po. Let's discuss the I2C or IIC protocol. Some people also call it I squared C, which uh, just means um, inter IC communication. For my presentation purpose, uh, let me just call it I2C protocol. The I2C protocol is not dependent to any micro or microcontroller. You can configure the micro no matter. This is uh, AT51, AVR, the PIC Micro, ST Micro, Samsung, Toshiba, EMC, Holtec, or any other micros. Um, and it is not restricted if this is an 8 bit, 16 or 32 bits, uh, or a system like uh, Arduino, Pinguino, or maybe uh, basic stamps. Um, and any other single board computer or SBC. The micro is called the master and the TDA7449L is the slave device. In our DR100 concept project, we have two slave devices. The first one is the TDA7449L and the second device is the EEPROM the AT2408. This is an electrically erasable, programmable, read-only memory for storing data, like uh, the last volume setting. We will not going to discuss the EEPROM right now. We will talk about this in another video. In I2C protocol, we identify the device, I mean the slave device, with their unique ID. In the data sheet, they call it the chip address. Well, it's the same to me, device ID or chip address is the same. And um, I can relate that to our daily life uh, that uh, we have our unique ID like the um, passport ID or SSS ID to identify us from uh, other people. And the TDA7449L comes with an uh, um, 88 hex ID that is a hexadecimal which uh, is equivalent to binary number of um, 1000 1000 this is an 8-bit data and uh, this is an equivalent to 136 in the decimal notation and uh, i can actually convert the data manually like um, in here the red number with a binary 0 goes 0 and only the number with binary 1 is considered. In this case, um, those the binary 1s uh, goes with uh, 128 and 8 uh, and adding this number, the summation is 136. Uh, you can try that in a binary to decimal calculator and it will give you the same number. 136 in decimal notation which is actually equivalent to 88 hexadecimal number knowing some basic of the i2c protocol right now we can actually enable the four function that is the input the gain the volume and the balance them and according to the data sheet the way the address is function is called sub address say for example to enable the input 
we specify the data for this function to be zero. You can see this from table seven of the data sheet by converting the eight bits binary data, which is all zero, so the decimal equivalent is also zero. Please note that the sub address is only to select the function and currently we are selecting the input. We are not yet selecting which input like input 1 or input 2. Later, we will come to that. Similarly, for the gain block, to enable the gain, it needs to specify the data for this function to be 1. Again, we are only specifying that I want to use the gain block. I am not yet specifying how many dB I am going to boost. Hey guys, I hope you are following. And now I want to use the volume controller. I'm going to specify the sub address to be 2. And um, I'm not yet specifying how many volume automation like 0 dB, um, minus 3, minus 24, minus 47. We will come to that later. And finally, the left and the right balanced or the speaker attenuator. The sub-address for the right channel is 6 and the sub-address for the left channel is 7 respectively. Hey guys, are you following up with me? It's now the time to supply the needed data for the sub address. Let's take a look at the input multiplexer. To select the two inputs in the input multiplexer, I need to supply the data to select input 2, which is 2. Should I decide to use input 1, I need to provide the data, which is 3. This is 1 byte or 8 bits. In summary, if I want to access the input multiplexer, I need to identify the device ID or chip address, which is uh, 136 in decimal notation. I need to specify the sub address function, which is zero. And finally, I need to send a data to choose either the input one for three or input two for two. That will be the same for the gain, but since the gain is from 0 dB to plus 30 dB in 2 dB steps, there will be more data. It's a total of 15 data to choose from. Well, of course, that is the same for the volume function, and the data to choose from will be more from 0 to minus 47 dB, Again, that is an attenuation, and then followed by the mute in a 1 dB steps. And finally, for the speaker attenuator or balance, which comes with more data, about 80 data to choose from, that is from 0 dB to minus 79, again in attenuation, and followed by the mute in a 1 dB steps. Guys, this is the end of my presentation to access the TDA7449L which will be used in our next episode as a digital volume control with the up and down button, the volume up and the volume down. There is no more rotating potentiometer but rather a push on a button. It looks digital. If you consider to explore more on digital volume control, or digital bus and travel, or even an equalizer, you may need to invest a time to learn and understand microcontroller programming, which is the reason why I have the episode 1 to 10, the microcontroller programming crash course using the popular and easy basic language with Bascom IDE. 
I put the 10 episode link on the description below. Go find it then. Alright DIYers, I'm signing off right now. I hope you learned from this video and if you do, kindly consider to subscribe, like my videos by clicking the thumbs up if I deserve it. Your subscription and likes or comment will help me a lot to improve my channel. It will going to reach more audience at YouTube. Thank you guys. Bye for now and see you in the next video.